everyone. My name's Duncan White. I'm the managing editor at the International Fire and Safety Journal. I'm here at Intersecond Dubai, and I'm delighted to be joined by Dennis Jensen from TLX. Dennis, good afternoon. Nice to meet you. And you, my friend. We are here to look at what's happening at TLX, looking at the exciting products and innovation that uh, we always expect to see from TLX. So, Dennis, tell me a little bit about the technology that we're seeing here on the stand at Intersect. Yeah, for most people in the industry, TLX is well known for actuation system, uh, whether it's on the uh, Novak FM200, any type of gaseous system. We go all the way out to traditional actuators, all the way up to uh, uh, explosion proof. But we branched out into kind of more support for the industry, uh, getting into weighing systems, liquid level, and other type of data gathering, because we think that's going to have a big impact on the future of the industry. And again, it's uh, it's keeping up with what the client wants and being one step ahead of what the industry and the regulators want. Yeah, and I think that there's a lot of action there. It's not just the globalization of standards. You've got some of the larger companies like we talked about before, whether it be uh, Amazon or, or Walmart, people that are asking for more information about the health of their systems and being able to get that information even remotely. Exciting stuff. And What's the Intersec experience been like for you so far? This show is so important to us. It gives us an opportunity to meet all of our customers in the Middle East, and it's basically reconnecting with old friends. Um, we do have like an 80% market share for our actuators, actuators uh, across the OEMs, so it's critical for us to be here. Excellent, and uh, we've been hearing uh, all the way through the show on these two days that uh, it's been a great experience for, for all our clients and partners. In terms of objectives for the Middle East, what are we looking at from TLX to, uh, to see that progress continuing? The Middle East is so important with the globalization of standards, it's such a huge opportunity. You have all these countries now that are seeing a lot of construction, a lot of new growth, and a lot of these countries are even saying, hey, we not only want uh, advanced fire protection systems for the new buildings, we actually want to retrofit old buildings. So the opportunity for growth in the Middle East is tremendous. And when you add that globalization of standards, there's now another kind of hidden opportunity. As these companies grow, they can adopt new technology, meet standards in other countries, and export. So it could be a, a big change in the market dynamic in the next five to 10 years. Exciting stuff. Yeah. Any projects that you can share with us that you're currently undertaking in the region? Yeah, you know, the big biggest things for me when it comes to the new technology, new product development, gets into that sensing and feedback that we talked about. We have uh, weighing systems for CO2 and mm -hmm. other gaseous system tanks. We also have a liquid level, uh, basically a way of understanding just what that agent level, what that gas level is in the cylinder. And additionally, we have things like the event recorder. The idea that you could understand even from a distance of whether or not the tank has uh, fired, whether or not it's been impacted by a forklift, what's the temperature, ambient temperature of the room where it's located. A lot of things that can be critical, especially in the Middle East, like for oil rigs, where you might not have somebody looking at those cylinders and the, the system set up, but they still need to understand what the health of that system is. I think it's exciting to think that uh, before very long, we're going to be in a position where we can remotely monitor the, uh, the state of our system. And yeah. We touched on a little bit off camera where we were talking about the ability for a large organization not to have to worry about any problems because the uh, systems of provider will, will rectify any issues as they come up on the dashboard. Yeah, and this is what's so exciting for me. It's just that being able to look and say, who is going to be the leader for the industry? Will it be the regulatory bodies that are coming up with standards for remote monitoring? Is it going to be the large OEMs who have already done research and bring out the dashboard that's coupled with all their systems globally? But the one that's really excites me the most is some of the installer uh, system integrator companies. They really want to provide more value, more service to their clients, even on a regional basis. So the idea that they could be collecting data about their systems and then basically on a monthly fee being able to support all their deployments and they could tell their customer that you don't have to worry of whether or not there's a problem with your system. We'll see it on the dashboard, we'll go and fix it, and then they'll be able to see that that fix has been done. It's going to be a very exciting time, and I think that we'll see it in the next five years of who's going to be the leader. And I think also you're going to get the situation where, where you're talking about on a local and regional basis. There might be some companies that are happy dealing with uh, a local guy 
rather than dealing with a with a huge conglomerate. So if we can get a situation where both can play an equal part in the market, yes. then everyone's got the opportunity to choose where they want to go. And I think that's where the regulatory bodies could be so important. If they would actually move to set those standards early, it levels the playing ground. Where now these uh, regional companies and the large OEMs, they're working toward the same standard and it should be much more easy for deployment. Exciting stuff. Yeah. So 2023, was a big year for the TLX. 2024 is gearing up for another big year. So in terms of highlights last year and looking forward to, to this year, what can you tell us? The big thing is we saw a rapid growth in our Explosion Proof, uh, one of the newer products. There's a lot of back and forth. We're actually doing a lot more discussion about what we might get into next. Pressure sensing has been brought up to us as a, a product that they would like to see add to TLX's portfolio. So we're talking to a lot of customers about what do they really looking for? We want low cost, of course, but what other performance characteristics do they want that they're not currently seeing? And that's the hole that we want to try to fill. That's always what we're looking to do for the future. I mean, we're well known for having supervision years before it was required. So we want to keep that communication with all the stakeholders in the industry, customers and prospects, to find out what they're not getting, what they need, and then we fill that gap. Excellent. I, uh... I'm looking forward to it the next time we chat, which will probably be down in Orlando for an FPA. Oh, NFPA. So come, come June, six months' time, we'll see what TLX have done. And I'm sure you will have far exceeded what we've talked about today. And we'll be here next year too. So Exactly. I'm Duncan White. I'm the Group Editor of the International Fire and Safety Journal. I've been talking with Dennis Jensen from TLX Technology. Dennis, take care, my friend. That's awesome. All the best.